there's been so much talk over the past couple days about this new European Super League. 12 teams breaking away, forming their own league, ditching the Champions League, all of this, and barely a single mention of the women's game. We got a three page statement from the Super League and they dedicated all of one sentence to the future of the women's game under this new format. And so it left us with more questions than answers. I mean, what's gonna happen to Chelsea and Barcelona who are in the Champions League semifinals? Could they really get kicked out of the Champions League? What's gonna happen to a team like Arsenal? The team I support who's just grinded and fought through this entire season to get a third place Champions League spot. All of that just to potentially not even be allowed in the competition next year. If they follow through with this plan and it's the same 12 clubs, are they really gonna have a women's European Super League that includes Liverpool, but not Lyon? There's, there's so many questions, but I think ultimately what we're all wondering is what does this mean for women's football? So that's what this video is about. What's up y'all, welcome back to side with Parker 2. Yet another video about the European Super League. Um, I made one last night and it was very reactionary and, and emotional. This one will be a little more calm and centered and, and rational, but you can certainly check that one out if you want to. Uh, I kind of just talked about why I think it's, it's really terrible for the game and how I feel as an Arsenal fan. So today we're going to talk about the potential ramifications that this could have for women's soccer all around the world. Um, and before we do that, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. We're almost to 400 subs, so help me get over that milestone. Um, and to be sure to drop a like on the video before we even get started, because that's what we do on this channel. So it feels like the women's game is really in this very sticky situation. They're in this very in-between moment in their development, because there's been all of this massive growth over the past couple of years, especially financially, with new broadcasting deals, clubs investing a lot more money into their women's teams, the level of competition growing and growing, more people getting a chance to play, more teams getting established. But at the same time, there's this massive gap between the money that's thrown at women's football versus the money that's thrown at men's football. And I feel like the women's game is constantly in this position where they want more money, they need more money, in order to get more girls playing from a young age, in order to improve the infrastructure, pay the players better, get more staff, hire more coaches, all these things that should be basic necessities. They need that money, but at the same time, we don't want everything that comes with the money because let's be honest, okay? I'm, I'm sure a lot of y'all will feel this way if you're women's soccer fans. The game is so much more pure than the men's game. It's so much more enjoyable in so many ways. It, there's not the same type of, of corruption. There's so much more integrity. There's so much more passion and, and drive. And, and people really play for the love of the game. Again, sometimes out of necessity, because at times they, they have not been supported enough. But, but there's a real amount of honor and integrity that just is not present on the men's side. And I think the, the main discourse that has come out of this whole European Super League being created is that people are really realizing just how far gone the game of soccer is from what it was, you know, 30, 50 years ago. And so much of that has to do with the influence of massive money, of massive TV contracts, of billionaire owners. And that trend has become irreversible. People want to make money and that is all they want to do. They kind of want to win. That's a, a secondary goal. But if they win and they're not making any money, it's not worth it really for them. So this is all very tricky. I mean, I, I can see why some people are excited at the possibility of a women's European Super League and how much money that that could potentially bring into the women's game. But I'm also very skeptical and I'm very nervous that if one was to be created, what it would really look like. And if these 12 owners who started this group really care at all about the women's game. I mean, we've already seen a few major women's and national players speaking out about this. Ada Hegerberg of Lyon put out a tweet and she said that, uh, quote, greed is not the future. Lara Wuba Moy made a tweet on Twitter basically saying that she, this is not the type of thing that she would have ever fallen in love with as a child and if it was in place she probably would not have gotten where she is today 
that tweet has since been deleted. But the point being that this is incredibly controversial and I think especially because there's so much lack of knowledge of what the actual plan is here for these women's teams. It's a bit scary and, and we're moving into uncharted territory. So I wanted, what I wanted to actually do is have a look at this statement. So if we have a look at the statement that the Super League put out, it's three pages long and they literally have one sentence on women's football. And this is word for word what it says. As soon as practicable after the start of the men's competition, a corresponding women's league will also be launched, helping to advance and develop the women's game. That's it very vague very nondescript and yeah i don't really know what to think of this it, my initial reaction when i read it was that this feels like the type of thing that they already had the statement typed up and somebody looked over it and said hey you didn't mention women's fault we should probably throw something in there about that it's actually really funny because they, they seem to have better proofreading than the nwsl teams when they put out an official team statement but uh less on that i actually think that in a way this could be a good thing i know it sounds weird you you don't want to be left out of these conversations but given the people who who started this league and given their intentions and given their their past disregard for the women's game i don't think these are the people that you want to be holding the future of women's football in their hands and so if it was something that they literally just put in as lip service and they haven't actually thought about it potentially the chance if they did launch a super league to you know have somebody come to them with a plan might work out better or if they don't actually end up including the women's teams at all and allow them to operate separately or i really i don't know how that would work necessarily but in my opinion i think that that ultimately could be better because right now i just don't think that a women's european super league could possibly be good for the game I talked about it a lot in my video yesterday, but this is simply about the rich getting richer. It's a complete disconnect from the fans. It's a complete disconnect from the players. I think it's bad for every single person except the owners of these 12 teams. And when you take the most major teams out of the European soccer pyramid, it has an enormous impact on all the teams below them because with the current models of revenue sharing, which actually have just been adjusted for the Women's Champions League and made a lot better, but do rely on some of those top teams. It's the money that these enormous clubs, these enormous brands are bringing in that actually supports a lot of the rest of them. And the need for that money in the women's game is far more dire than it is in the men's game. And because there's already so much of a, a larger gap between the very upper crust, you know, the teams that are consistently making the Champions League quarterfinals or so, and the rest of the teams in the world, it would just wedge such a large disconnect that it would literally only be good for, you know, whichever 12 teams they choose. And it could genuinely get to a point where it would almost kill off all the rest of the teams if no other outside support was added. Like, I, I genuinely, I'm really concerned about that. I think that this would be horrific for the women's game you know there was so much triumph in the latest tv broadcast deal with sky for the the wsl and part of the greatness of it is that it was revenue shared equally and 25 percent of the revenue went to the championship to help try to build that up and it went to infrastructure and it went to better refereeing this money would essentially go off the table because because at that point sky is going to want the broadcast rights to the new women's european super league and they're not gonna give a toss about the women's super league in england anyway to get back to the statement the other thing that is very unclear from reading this is who would actually be a part of a theoretical women's european super league it says that a corresponding women's league will also be launched so does that mean it corresponds to the 12 teams that are in the men's league because the 12 teams on the men's side are AC Milan, Arsenal, Atletico, Chelsea, Barcelona, Inter, Juventus, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Real Madrid, and Tottenham. And if you actually look down that list of names, I mean, you've got teams that are sitting in eighth place in their domestic leagues. If you take Inter and you take Tottenham, you've got a team in Liverpool who won't let the women use the club facilities that they've 
just spent hundreds of millions on for the men. And they're still in the second division of the championship. And then you got a team like Real Madrid that's literally in its first season. Juventus is like four years old. United is like three years old. Yes, you, you have Arsenal in there, Chelsea, City, but all in all, I think combined, there is one European trophy between these 12 teams and it's from Arsenal. I mean, surely, surely, right? That if they were gonna launch a European Women's Super League, they would have to include Lyon. They would have to include Wolfsburg. They would have to try to include PSG and Bayern if they would sign up. Like, I just, I, I refuse to believe that, that they would start it without those teams and that they would include Liverpool. And so that is what makes me slightly hopeful that maybe this isn't happening after all in the women's game, or it's, it's so far down the line that there's room for it to change before then. But then again, that's me operating through a lens of logic and nothing about this entire thing so far has been very logical. So I really just, I, I have no idea. But yeah, I mean, that's that's really the extent of what we know. It's It's been quite literally one sentence from the Super League about the women's game and a very nondescript sentence at that. So uh, that's all I can really say about it for now. But I am worried about what this could mean because right now it feels like there's, there's just so much good momentum around the women's game. And I fear that if this were to go forward the way that it seems, the way that it is going forward, with the men's clubs, this could be detrimental to women's football and a lot of that progress could potentially be erased. So yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So certainly leave those down below. As I said at the beginning, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. I do make a lot of women's soccer content. So definitely stick around, check that out, check out some old videos and see if you like them. Um, and drop a like on this video if you didn't already. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.